the Joe Rogan experience. One thing that always trips me out is I think about like people we view as l lunatics and like, what if they are seeing reality and we have blinders on, you know, because when you take into account what a finite percentage of what's really out there that we're able to see with our perception, you know, compared to like x-rays and gamma rays and all of these things, like we have such a tiny filter on everything that's really going on out there. Like, yeah. We don't really see, we don't see shit compared to what's really there. And like maybe these whacked out people are just seeing more of what's happening. And that's what makes them nuts because they're like, you're not seeing all these demons flying around <laughs> and all these colors. And yeah. like, we just have, we have a filter on that so we can like process information where like, and it keeps us sane. But that's, I mean, what's really going on out there? But you think about how small an amount of acid you need to take to completely perturb the way you view the world. Yeah. You know, I think McKenna described this. Terrence McKenna described acid, that the potency of acid is like, it's literally like, for in, in terms of like the amount that you need in order to have an effect, he made an analogy like an ant deconstructing the entire empire state building in a matter of seconds mm. like that's how potent it is in terms yeah. of volume yeah. like you don't need a couple drops of acid mm -hmm. in a huge human body and you're tripping balls for seven hours yeah you know that's a chemical disruption of this very delicate ecosystem mm -hmm. so if your neurochemistry is off in any way up or down, sideways, screwy, you got too much of this or too much of that, yeah. which we know is the case with everything, right? Like some people are born with bad eyesight. Some people are born deaf. Some people are born and they have uh, problems uh, processing pain. They don't feel pain correctly. Mm -hmm. Some people are born and they must have an imbalance of the chemicals that are floating around inside your head. Yeah. And their view of the world is radically different than ours. Yeah. And also those chemicals can shift depending on for your personal experience, like life, like abuse, P children that are abused, their chemicals in their head as they're developing are off. They're different. Yeah. Their brains are different. They process life different because of abuse. Mm -hmm. People that have experienced extreme trauma, extreme violence when they're young, PTSD, mm. they're processing things differently than people that have not. Yeah. What's even crazier about that is I read a book called It Didn't Start With You, and it talks about how these things are passed on generationally from like trauma your grandparents had is passed on to you through your DNA and, and, it, and, it, and it changes us. Like how much is passed on to us that we have no control over mm. that alters our, the way we feel things, the way we see things, um, all of these uh, um, experiences that people have that, 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 that just get passed, passed down like that um, without any um, outside influence, just, just through that process of being born. Do you have any children? No. When you have children, you see it in a really weird way. Like um, my middle daughter, my 11-year-old, is uh, an obsessive. Yeah. Like she she's a, obsesses on things and tries to get better at them or you got to try to tell her, hey, time to go to bed. And she's doing like backflips in her room and shit. <laughs> like, stop, yeah. stop, go to bed. Like, you got to go to bed. But that's me. Yeah. Like, and I always thought I was fucked up. Mm -hmm. I was like, I thought I was doing this and I probably was my whole life to try to show that I had value because I felt like I was ignored and I didn't know my dad and I always felt like an outsider and a loser. And I always felt like... I would become, I would throw myself into things to show that I had value mm. and I would get really good at things to show that I had value. Yeah. And that'd be the, this obsession was like me trying, like uh, trying to escape the existential angst of my existence and just the, the constant anxiety and this just feeling of just inadequacy, uh, trying to escape it by being obsessed with things, but also trying to prove mm -hmm. through getting good at things that I have value. Because yeah. the first time I ever felt like I was worth anything was when I started getting good at martial arts. Uh -huh. and like, and then people started respecting me. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm, I have a thing that people think I'm good at. And now yeah. that I'm good at this thing, that became my identity. And then I just threw myself into that. But my daughter's grown up with none of that. Like, yeah. she's all loved and she's all smiley and happy and she's not depressed. She gets a lot of hugs and she has friends, but she's a fucking psycho. <laughs> 
And I'm like, oh, you got that for me. Like, you got yeah. my crazy gene, but you got it without all the fucked up parts. Right. Like, you're not sad. Mm -hmm. You got it without the sad thing. You just want to get good at stuff mm. without, like, a happiness to it. Yeah. And also a feminine happiness to it. Right. Instead of a masculine, like, a gr I just wanted to smash. Yeah. That's all I wanted to do. I just want to smash things mm -hmm. to, because I was angry. But she's not angry. It's, so it's weird to see this obsessive, like completely obsessive behavior in terms of like trying to get better at things. And she accelerates it. She excels at so many different things that she gets good at. Yeah. She gets good at things and they become her whole life, like all day long, obsessive. Like it's really weird, yeah. but in a happy way. Uh -huh. And it's, so it's, it's strange genetically. Yeah. You know, and you know, you've met my dog, Marshall. Yeah. Yeah. The fucking nicest dog in the world, yeah. right? He's so nice. Yeah. That's a genetic thing. Mm -hmm. That dog is a golden retriever. And when he, like, when you come over to him and he starts whining and he's so happy and he wants to get pet and he runs and grabs a toy, always. He always wants to bring you something. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't teach him that. Yeah. I've had him for three years. I've had him since he was a little tiny baby. He was like six weeks old when I got him. Never had a rough day in his life. <laughs> Every day's been fun. But... He's learned through his DNA that he's supposed to retrieve things mm. and bring them over and that you are happier when he brings things over because that's the DNA that's in his system. It's not, he didn't learn it. Yeah. He, this is literally inside of him from the box, like right out of the box. Look at the ingredients. Oh, he likes to bring you things yeah. because his ancestors brought you things. His ancestors brought other people things and he, they were rewarded for it. And they said, oh, they give me treats and they like me more when I bring things. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just keep, when you, you know, you shoot a duck out of the sky and they get that duck and bring it over and everybody gets happy. So it's in him. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't think we understand what what dna actually is or, yeah. or whatever the fuck you dna is just a name right mm. what are the components of the life form that are passed when two life forms breed and they make another one i don't think we really understand it i think we we have a rudimentary understanding of the chemistry involved mm -hmm. but in terms of like personality yeah. and in terms of like the, the thoughts that are in our heads mm -hmm. like I was reading something by uh, Rupert Sheldrake, and he was talking about why uh, children are afraid of monsters. Mm -hmm. He's like, children that grow up in the city are afraid of monsters. They're not afraid of like uh, gunshots and car accidents, things that are really scary. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of monsters yeah. because our ancient ancestors were eaten by cats. Yeah. They yeah. were eaten. And by wolves and those kind of things. So we're, we're afraid of fangs and things in the dark when mm -hmm. you can't see them coming, you can't protect yourself. Yeah. Crazy. 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 It's in there. It's in the DNA. Yeah. I mean, there's so much there's so much stuff like that that just we don't understand anything. Have like, you ever met someone that has like a legit phobia, like a phidiophobia or arachnophobia, like fear of snakes or spiders? I know that I have. I'm trying to think of who that was. But yeah, it's like, where did that come from? It's DNA, man. I guarantee. I've, I've seen it on Fear Factor. We had a few people yeah. that had a legit fear of snakes and spiders. And they're like, oh my God, oh my God. You see their whole body was shaking yeah. and they were trying like, hey, these aren't even fucking poisonous. Yeah. Like, these are just snakes. Mm -hmm. But there's something about snakes, like someone they love or their, someone in their ancestry or some, someone survived a snake attack, something. <laughs>